Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending. My name is Tim Hurley. I'm with GPT. We're going to be doing a series of talks. They're going to be called Tim Talks. Today's topic is going to be advances in technology for isolation. FIKs and MIJs are very important tools in our battle against corrosion. Corrosion costs about $2.2 trillion per year. This is one of the newer numbers developed by NACE. So it's an extremely expensive proposition if you've got corrosion. I got a number of images uh, for this slide about corrosion, and unfortunately, it was really easy to get all of these images. There's just corrosion everywhere. Corrosion never sleeps, it's insidious, it never takes a break. There was a fight against corrosion, and it started in really 1909 with the development of phenolics uh, for isolation. Phenolics actually were started in 1907. Phenolic is a plastic material. It was originally called Bakelite. And Bakelite uh, was the first plastic. And it was a very hard material. I think everybody here is familiar with phenolic material. It's um, what they use for pool balls. Pool balls are extremely hard material. If you ever had your hand on a pool table and got your knuckle hit, you'll know that it's a very hard material. If you had a gasket made just of phenolic plastic and you put it in a flange, during the loading process, it's going to crack. So what they did, and they learned that very quickly, is they put in a number of different fillers in the phenolic plastic to make it more conforming to the flange and, and it wouldn't crack when they do installation. So they put in cotton uh, fiber, canvas, and paper typically uh, as the material that helped act like little shock absorbers in the phenolic to help prevent cracking. The problem with those materials is that they absorb moisture. And although on paper, phenolic looks like it's a good isolating material, and a good rule of thumb is typically 500 volts per mil for dielectric. If you've got over 500 volts per mil, usually a good electrical isolator under that, it's questionable. And so dielectric uh, properties for phenolics can drop dramatically, even in just humid areas. So if you had 96% humidity, the volts per mil, the dielectric, could drop down to less than 100 volts per mil, and you wouldn't have a good isolator. If you have rain or snow melt, what's paper, cotton, and canvas going to do? They're going to absorb the moisture, and it's going to be a problem for isolation. Here's an image of some of the fibers that are put in phenolic material. As you can see, especially on the OD, it's, it's going to be exposed to moisture. Um, if it's raining, snow melt, et cetera, those fibers are going to pull that into the body of the gasket. We developed GRE in 1942. GRE is glass-reinforced epoxy. One of the first uses was, was used to build boats, but very quickly they realized it was also good for isolation electrically. So they started putting it in gasketing materials. And one of the first gaskets was the linebacker material. And the way they make GRE is they take a resin and they also take glass fiber materials, typically woven glass fibers, and they'll integrate the two. Very similar to the issue that you would have had with phenolics. You just can't have the pure resin. It's going to crack. There's no flexibility. So the glass fiber gives it flexibility and it works out really, really well for a gasket. So the linebacker uh, was invented right around 1968, commercially available in 1972. And this product has a GRE retainer with elastomeric seals or PTFE seals. The problem is the design of the product, uh, you can have permeation between the two seals, as exemplified by this image. So this is nitrogen, 400 PSI, so it's not super high pressure, uh, but it's permeating through the glass reinforced epoxy. And that's not surprising to me anyway, because when you look at glass under a microscope, it looks like a straw. And the media is going to flow straight along that straw. When it does that, you get permeation. Some people, probably more clever than myself, decided, hey, let's cheat that path, that leak path. So what they did was they made a tortuous path for the media. So the media might come in through the ID but with a different design, like the PGE design in the middle, the media has to go around a couple of seals. So it makes it more difficult for the permeation to occur. And then, um, probably contrary to um, popular thinking, someone said, hey, let's put metal in the core. And using a metal for an isolating material is counterintuitive. You might think, that's crazy. But it really works well, because it stops the permeation. So the VCS came out 
uh, right around 1978. Uh, it was actually commercialized in 81. It was first used in the Alaska pipeline. And this design uh, typically uses either Viton or PTFE as the sealing element. And the sealing element goes all the way from the flange surface to the metal core. This is really brilliant. So it allows the permeation to occur on the IED. The media goes through the glass fibers to the seal, and the seal is always designed so that the C-shaped seal is facing towards the pressure. It's a pressure-activated seal. There's a spring in there that keeps that, that spring open so that the pressure energizes it. So this is one example where you take a problem and actually turn it into a benefit because VCS, as the pressure goes up, it could potentially seal better because that seal is then pushing against the flange face. The media has got nowhere to go. The media will permeate through the initial layer of GRE. It'll hit the seal. It'll try to go above. If you've got enough compressive load, it can't go anywhere. It'll try to go below. Again, if you have enough compressive load, it can't go anywhere because there's a metal core. Alas, uh, there's always something that could be better. So someone said, hey, look at that's a great product, works really well, but it's not fire safe. And a lot of the applications that we would use this product in need to be fire safe. They're critical oil and gas applications. So if you have a flammable material in your pipeline, you probably should have a fire safe product. So enter VCFS. VCFS, very critical fire safe gasket, works extremely well in flammable applications. Uh, if you've got oil and gas, uh, it's a perfect product for it. It's got the same design on the ID as the VCS. It still has a spring energized seal. And the addition is, uh, again, very clever. There's an E-ring that's made of ink and L, it's coated uh, for electrical isolation with a backup ring uh, that's carbon steel with a halar coating, uh, also electrical isolation. And so if you look at this gasket, the PTFE is going to disappear. The glass reinforced epoxy is going to disappear. You want to maintain your bolt load. But how do you maintain that load? If, if the products are disappearing, that's within the flange. The backup ring holds the flange exactly the same as it was to begin with. So all that original load is still maintained. The E-ring is your secondary seal. So the E-ring will allow the pressure to hit it. It'll act just like the PTFE seal did. That will act as a pressure energized metallic seal at that point. And in a fire situation, you're going to have extremely low leakage and not feed the fire. So perfect product for flammable applications. All right, so we have talked about permeation through GRE. And there are certain ways that we can utilize that pressure to help us, but you don't really want permeation through your product, do you? You want something that doesn't permeate. So VCSID was developed. Around 2010, GPT came out with a patent for VCSID. And this idea uh, eliminates the permeation through that GRE. It blocks off the media before it can ever get to the GRE. So here it is. It's got a patented interlock system into the retainer. So that ID seal's not coming out. If you have a vacuum service, it still won't come out. It stops the media from getting to the GRE. All right, so why is that important? It's important because the glass is really chemically resistant, but the epoxy isn't very re chemically resistant. The PTFE seal keeps chemicals from getting to that epoxy material. Also, if you look at the, the PTFE seal, it's concave in nature. And if you look at the pressure, it's going to drive the seal towards the flanges. So again, it's effectively an energized seal via pressure. As you go up in pressure, it's going to further push those seals towards the flange face. For larger gaskets, six inches and larger, you're going to have dual seals. And the reason you have a dual seal is because the larger the flange, the more lack of parallelism you have. And you might have some rotation. So if you have either of those problems and this, the media goes past the first seal, you've got a redundant seal to stop any leakage. Next is the Diamond Hide product. It was introduced in 2017. The prior art was people using GRE or G10 uh, washers, sometimes G11 washers, and they would couple those with metallic washers. I just talked to somebody yesterday, uh, actually saw an image today, where the GRE was crushed uh, during installation. The reason most likely was they reversed the, the washers. 
So they had the GRE washer near the nut. So you're point, point loading that washer and creating damage. G10 and G11 have a lot of uh, capability for compressive load, 60 to 65,000 PSI. So it's a really resistant material, but even that's not going to handle the rigors of a nut compressing and rotating on it. So you have to have that metal washer. A lot of maintenance people haven't been trained properly. They'll reverse the washers and end up with exactly that issue. Some people will look at the GRE or glass reinforced washer, think it's just packaging for the metal washer to keep it protected while it's shipped, and they'll throw those in the garbage and just use the metal washer. You only need one washer to go bad and you lose your isolation. So this whole battle against corrosion disappears just because one washer failed. So a great alternative is the diamond hide washer. The diamond hide is a much simpler product uh, to use for electrical isolation. It's coated uh, with a dielectric coating. Um, so you've got, if you use two washers, you have four layers of isolation. So even if a, um, somebody scratched one of the layers, if there was a pebble in the spot face of the, the flange, if there was some welding spatter on the spot face, you've still got at least three layers that are gonna be isolating. So it's kind of the stupid simple method to solve that problem with the GRE. Uh, you just use a diamond hide washer. So the diamond hide washer works extremely well in salt spray applications. It's resistant to salt, and we've got salt spray testing to verify that. We've done abrasion testing. There's a Tabor abrasion test that can be done to get a wear index. And you can see from the slide that the diamond hide has the best wear index of any of the coatings that we tested. So it's extremely abrasion resistant. It's got high temperature capabilities, 425 degrees Fahrenheit. It's got good dielectric at 540 volts per mil. It's got excellent water absorption at between 0.01 and 0.02%. So very similar to a GRE material. So what that means is you can do um, isolation in rain. You can have isolation in snow melt. You're still going to have isolation. With phenolics, you won't have it. With GRE, you would. With, di with the diamond hide, you'll still have isolation. We didn't cover sleeves. Um, the best available technology for sleeves currently is G10 or G11. Uh, those are two very good selections for sleeves. They have, uh, again, a very high compressive strength, so you don't have to worry about side loading and, and threads permeating through the, the sleeve. Um, Mylar is a very common sleeve in the market, and there is an issue with that. The material is soft enough that you can squeeze it with your finger, and if you can squeeze it with your finger, just imagine what a bolt thread is going to do if there is some side loading. VCFS is really the best available technology for fire safe applications. Uh, there are a number of options out there. Uh, there are cam profiles. Uh, I'm not a big personal fan of cam profiles. There's creep relaxation uh, with cam profiles. The uh, serrations are not very far. They're just thousands from the flange serrations. So the cam serrations uh, could actually conduct through the material. Um, and some of the materials also absorb moisture. So, Cam profile is probably not the best design, and from my experience, the VCFS would be the best design available today. The VCS ID is fantastic because I see more and more H2S in oil and gas applications. Uh, if you have steam, GRE doesn't work well in steam either. So VCS ID would be a great selection if you're worried about chemical attack of the GRE. And diamond hide, um, bar none, is the best available. Uh, washer material that there is. There are a number of types of Xylans that are out there today. Most of those were in the abrasion testing that we did and didn't perform extremely well in abrasion testing. The diamond hide is extremely strong in abrasion resistance. So and that's what you're gonna want. If you have, somebody, you have somebody torquing down on a flange, torquing down on a nut, you're gonna want your washer to be extremely abrasion resistant. That's it. I appreciate everyone's time. Thank you. Let's get corrosion before it gets us.